everyone, it's Julia, and welcome back to my channel. This week I've been working on just something springy for my walls. It's a scrappy art quilt or wall quilt. It measures approximately 19 inches wide by 23 inches long, and it's completely made with just scraps that I've had on hand. I do have this um, available in my Etsy shop, this little template and instructions. It comes in a little packet um, and you can, I did the, the template in three different sizes. This is the large size that I used for this quilt. I also have it though in a medium and a small. I thought the small one would be great for like a journal cover, just large enough to put on like a journal cover, um, possibly a pillow. And I also just recently did another video that I'll be uploading um, soon. It's, it's on a thrifted shirt. And I put the medium sized one on the back of a shirt and that just turned out really cute too. So you'll see that video, but I wanted to make this available for you in case anybody else wants to do this project. A little bit more about it. I did free motion stitch the little jar on, but I think that would be an easy way to add some um, hand stitching if you want to just hand embroider that jar on instead of free motion stitching. And then I did add some color to the jar with Derwent Inktense pencils. Um, again, that's a complete optional thing. Um, you could also probably use watercolor. I'll, I'll link down below a video I did where I tested watercolor on fabric and with a fabric medium that I used instead of water and it washed up wonderfully. So th those options are available too if you do want to add some color to the mason jar, but again, it would be completely optional. Even the back, I go over this in the video, but even the back I, I, is, is scraps. I just, I didn't have enough for the complete back and so I did add some border on it and put a little holder for a dowel on the top. So I hope you enjoy this, everybody. The link down below, uh, link down below again, the pattern for this. I just put it in my Etsy shop in case anybody else is interested in this um, cute little wall hanging. I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. Starting with the background, I cut 20 four and a half inch squares and I used neutral colors, just scraps that I had um, just in different shades of beiges and whites and, and you get it, you can see it there. I'm, cut, I'm gonna arrange these in rows. So I'm gonna have five rows of four, just using a quarter inch seam allowance to sew these and then taking them to my ironing board and pressing the seams one direction. And then I want those seams to go in opposite direction here so I don't have that bulk. One will lay one way and one will lay the other and I'm just gonna sew that, again, using a quarter inch seam allowance. When all five of my rows of four are sewn together, just gonna give that one final press and getting, again, the seams to one direction. And this is what it looks like when all my squares are sewn together and now it's on for the borders. I am using a leftover jelly roll that I had in these fun bright colors. I need 40 of these squares for the border and they are two and a half by two and a half, so two and a half squares. I arranged them going around. I started with my top and my bottom first and then I sewed the sides. Um, there's I think eight going across each of this top and the bottom and then 12 on the sides. Again, using quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm using steam -a seam 2 for my paperback adhesive. And it's an interesting product. It does have two um, papers, one on the top and the bottom and the adhesive is in between. I am just tracing the outer part of these flowers. Um, that is all I'm gonna be using for my flowers. I do put a center in too and you'll see that later. But I'm first of all just um, tracing those outer circles and they're wonky. I just kind of like the whimsical look of those. And then I'm also going to be tracing the, the leaves. Just rough cutting these out. And now I'm peeling one side of that paper away. And then Steam -a Seam 2 will be tacky on the inside, which is just kind of an easy way. I'm just gonna lay pieces. I'm just gonna be a very scrappy looking applique or almost like a fabric collage. 
If you've done any fabric or collage quilting, it's a very similar technique. Just gonna be laying these in. Now I've done different videos where I've used just a heat and bond, which light, which is does not have the tacky. And then I just put a light coat of school glue on the top of these and it works the same way. It just kind of keeps all those pieces into place until you cut out your applique. Onto the blue one, this is gonna be a blue flower. Um, and then my third flower is yellow, but I'm doing this, this much the same way, just cutting out pieces. And I do overlap these pieces by a scant, oh, like an eighth of an inch or so, a scant quarter of an inch. Just want to do everything to be covered and then to, to be overlapped slightly. Just placing a piece of that backing on there and then ironing that over the top so I don't get anything on my iron that I don't want on. Ironing it, ironing it from both sides, and then I can just cut that out. And you can see, you can easily just peel that backing off now and you have an applique. Onto the yellow one, I left this mainly, it was not too scrappy. I think there's little two scraps of yellow on there, but I wanted just to put a center flower, and I just cut that from a, a, one of those pieces of that jelly roll. And then just added a, a oblong or a wonky shaped circle for the for the other two flowers in in the yellow colors now for the stem now again this it's tacky so i peeled part of that paper back and i'm just tacking these pieces of green on for now didn't have much of this this particular green print left but i wanted some of that on there just rough cutting i can see that and then i'm just going to press this from the top just press it right over that that piece of paper. It's almost like a parchment paper at this point. And now those greens have a paperback adhesive on them. And those are that's what I'm going to be using for my stems. Also cutting out those leaves and adding a leaf to the back of these green prints. All my pieces are cut out now. Now for the mason jar. I'm going to be machine I'm going to be free motion stitching this mason jar on. And we'll be using just a piece of a sulky. I'm going to list I'll have it listed down below for you. This is a water soluble stabilizer and it's um, called Solvi by Sulky. It's just the brand I use. There are several different brands on the market. You can completely see through it and I'm just tracing that jar. I'm placing that jar how I want it on my on my um, quilt top, just for a reference. Now peeling back that paper on the back of those, and now this is a, it's going to be tacky, which is wonderful with this steam a seam too, because I can put those flowers on and move them the way I want them, and they, you know it's just an easy way to do your fabric um, design. Now that mason jar, I just pinned it at the bottom so I could fold that back. And you'll see why I want to do that because I want to get that placement right when I'm getting these stems on. These stems I'm just going to cut at approximately, oh, I, I think it's probably three eighths of an inch. It's a little bit less than a half, a half an inch in width. And then just cutting pieces of that. These um, stems are going to be very scrappy, similar to the flowers. Just peeling that back, and now again, this is gonna have a tacky feel to it, so I can move them around if I need to. Just getting that mason jar out of the way as I come down with my stem. Folding it back up so I can see what I'm doing, just to make sure I like the how it's arranged. Then it's on for add to adding the leaves. Really fiddling around with it here, just deciding how I want those those flowers to be angled. 
When everything is arranged the way I want it, I'm going to remove that mason jar and just set it aside. I'll be using that later. I don't show this, but I'm taking this to my ironing board and I'm pressing this into place with steam. After I've made my sandwich, so I have my top, I have my batting, and I have my backing. And I cut my backing and my batting a little bit bigger than the front. And the backing, I didn't have enough fabric, so I did piece that on the side, just with a piece of that, that jelly roll, running down each side of the, um, like, almost like a border on the back side. Just thought that looked kind of neat. I'm at my sewing machine, and I do have my free motion foot on. And I just have regular all-purpose thread in, both the top and the bo bottom. Oh, just in the color white. For this scrappy applique, I'm going to be um, just doing a, a meander, a tight meander stitch. I want to make sure I get all the edges. So I'm just going off the edge a little bit and I'm just doing that squiggle tight applique or, or free motion stitch. You can see it there. Just getting all those little pieces. I'm doing the same with the, the stems and also the leaves. Just that tiny little meander stitch. Now I'm opening it up and I'm doing a large meander stitch for the back background almost looks like puzzle pieces and I'm not I'm not too exact with this it really hides if you make a mistake um, it just really hides it easy on this fabric um, and then for this border I'm doing a scalp you can see me I'm just taking a, a small scalp over two of those little squares and now I change my pressure foot you can tell it's different this is my darning foot and it has little red marks on so I can do a double scalloped here I'm just doing something fancy um, I'm trying anyway and I'm just using that as a guide and I got it done and you can see what it looks like on the back side all of my little um, quilting marks put that mason jar back on just with some some pins just in the place that I want it and I'm back at my sewing machine now with black thread. I still have the white thread in the bobbin. And I'm going to go right on this line and I'm going back and forth. You can see me, I'm just making it so it's quite bold. I want it to show up nice. This is an easy way to add a design um, if, you, if you can't see through it. Like sometimes you can trace something just by taking it to a window or a light source but it's hard when it's through several layers um, I just found this is the easiest way to trace a design onto a piece of fabric now you just remove those bigger pieces of this water soluble stabilizer and it just pulls off really easily I'm also going to pull it away from the inside on those big pieces of this inside of this mason jar. You can see it just coming away in one big piece. Some of those little edges I'm going to, to get rid of those, I'm just going to, to spray it with some water. And then I'm going to lay a, a old, um, an old dish towel I have that I'm going to be using. You can also use a paper towel just to cover it and you'll see what I'm doing here. Just have a little bit of it left. I don't need to do much of this. But again, I'm just gonna spray it with a little spray bottle. You can also just damp, dampen your, your towel. Either way works. Just wanna get that so, cause it is water soluble. So it'll just come up onto your, onto your um, paper towel or your dish towel. And you can see it, just a little bit of it just coming up there. I'm really loving this, but I want to add a little bit of color to the mason jar, and I'm going to use my Inktense pencils for this, and a little bit of olive oil gel. I just have a chart there of colors. I just kind of um, did all of them just to kind of see. I'm just going to do a gray color and a blue color. It's going to keep it simple. Um, I'm not really good at shading or I just, you know, I just like to color. And <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit to this jar. I have a big set of these pencils, but it's not necessary because you can really blend well with these two. 
Um, so if you're interested, you can s certainly start with like a 24 pack or a 36 pack. Um, I'll link them down below too on this video if you're interested. If you don't want to invest but you have a just some watercolors at home, I have done watercolors on fabric with really good results and they are washable. You sometimes don't think it could possibly be washable, but use fabric medium and heat set them and I have washed them as well. So, so if you want to add some color to it, you know, you do have your options. Just picking up a little bit of, of that aloe vera gel on my paintbrush, adding some water to it too, because it's quite thick, just to get it to move a little bit better. And then also keep in mind when you're doing, if you're working with ink tents, as it dries, and in watercolor as well, it's gonna dry a lot lighter. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue here in a little bit, and it was almost like, oh my gosh, that's too dark, but it dried just fine. You just, you know, so don't panic if you don't, if you don't like, if you think it's too, too bright or too dark. Just continuing to go in, going in and, and adding a little bit more of that gel on my, on my brush. I'll link that down below too, or you can also just get it um, in, at Walmart or a grocery or a, um, like a CVS store. And when I have my color on the way I want it, I'm just going to heat set it. Just put a piece of parchment tape paper over the top and then just use my iron just to give it some heat. I want to add some pockets to this on the back to, so you can hang it with a dowel. These are eight inch squares, just folding them into these triangles. And those will go on before my, just, just I'm just making them a little bit more even there. They weren't quite square. Just evening them up. And this, these will go into, pinned into place and sewn into place before I put on my binding. I just put them in the corners and then I'll just pin them and then I'll stitch these right on. I'm gonna link a, another video where I show how I do my binding. It's just a real easy way to bind these quilts. Um, but I, for the binding, I'm just gonna use some more of this red um, and then it, I thought it worked just really well. Some, what it looks like, I just got the binding on, I hand stitched on the back. Love the quilt look on the back of this. I took this back to my sewing machine and I did outline the flowers and leaves and, pe and petals in black. I just felt like it needed to pop. Um, I, have I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I um, hope you have a chance to create. Bye for now.